Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. We're starting our series on young earth creationism today, and I think it's appropriate to start that off with chapter one, the creation of the earth. Now this is a documentary on young earth creationism that I'm reviewing right now. The link is in the description. Before we get started, let's have a look and see how science dates the earth and the creation of the earth. We base it on radiometric dating. We look at examples throughout the universe of planets being formed. We look at the physics of the planets in the orbits and gravitation. So let's go ahead and have a look at how the young earth creationists justify their belief that the earth is only 6,000 years old. So let's roll the music and get started. In the world we live in today, we are told that the universe originated with an event known as the Big Bang. According to this theory, everything that has ever existed was originally condensed into a single small point. Then, that concentrated point exploded, shooting all matter into every direction, thus giving birth to what is known as the universe. The Bible, however, tells a completely different story. In the book of Genesis, we are given the account of creation. This is the record of how God created the earth. Genesis 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. According to this verse, the earth is the result of God creating it, not the result of a giant explosion. But perhaps the theory of the Big Bang and the biblical account of creation are not contradictory. Perhaps, God used the Big Bang to create the Earth. This idea becomes impossible after examining the sequence of the days of creation. God created the Earth on the first day. God did not create the sun, moon, and stars until the fourth day. Therefore, there could not have been an explosion propelling all stars into every direction, simply because stars did not exist yet. Okay, so let me see if I get this straight. The Big Bang Theory is based on lifetimes of studying physics and lifetimes of gathering data. And you can dismiss that because somebody said in your theory that heaven and earth was created on the first day, but the stars were not created to the fourth day. Therefore, the Big Bang can't occur. What kind of circular reasoning is that? There are other details in the theory of the Big Bang that do not line up with the Bible. First, the Big Bang supposedly took place 13.8 billion years ago. The Bible, however, says that God created everything that exists approximately 6,000 years ago. Secondly, the Big Bang Theory says that the universe is constantly expanding, becoming bigger and bigger every day. The Bible, however, says God finished creating the heavens on the sixth day. Genesis 2 verse 1 says, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. If the universe is currently expanding, that means that it is not finished. Well, before we even get into how you figured out the Earth was only 6,000 years ago, do you see the flaw in your argument already? If the Earth was finished, according to the book of Genesis, within a week, it would not be expanding. The universe is expanding in a measurable amount. We can prove that the universe is expanding. Therefore, your argument is invalidated. I guess we're pretty much done with the series now. You've already invalidated your own argument. But just for the sake of fun, and since this is not a scientific evaluation of your theory, because your theory isn't science, we're going to look at the sociology of these arguments that you're making and continue. So let's go ahead and finish up. The Big Bang is simply an attempt to explain the world we live in today without including God in the equation there was simply a small point of matter that then exploded. 
The Bible, however, tells us that this is impossible. Hebrews 11 verse 3 says, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. If the world is incorrect on how the earth was created, perhaps it is also wrong on what the earth is as well. You know, a story that I like to tell when I discuss creationism is the story of my mom's cookies. When I was five years old, my mom used to make cookies. She took dough and stuff and just put it into the oven and out came delicious cookies. She was just a creator of magic as far as I could, was concerned. Now, as I grew up and became educated, I understood that there were ingredients that went into cookies and a chemical process occurred when you put them in the oven and heated them. Does that mean that my mom isn't still a creator and a wonderful person? Does it mean that her cookies are not still delicious? No, it just means that I understand the process by which she made the cookies. Much like we understand the process of how the earth was created. Does that mean that God does not exist? Of course not. What's to say that God didn't use natural forces to create the planet? Now, here's the question that I have for you. God gave man the ability to reason according to the Bible. Are you saying that we should not use our reason to try and understand the world around us? Does understanding the world around us detract in any way from God? I don't think so. So your entire argument so far has been invalid. This is not a dichotomy of choices. We, we don't have to either believe in God or believe in science. We can believe in both. We can use science to understand the work of God if you want to look at it that way. If the world is incorrect on how the earth was created, perhaps it is also wrong on what the earth is as well. Let's continue to investigate the creation account to get a better idea of what God actually created. Okay, so here we are just a few minutes into your presentation and you've already invalidated your own argument. You've brought up two points. One, the Big Bang could not have occurred because according to the book of Genesis, the stars were not formed until after the earth was and that the entire universe was quote unquote finished and therefore fixed at the end of Genesis. We can measure the fact that it is not fixed, it's expanding. So that invalidates your argument right there. Second of all, your argument that the earth is only 6,000 years old is based on numerology and attributing lifespans of up to 180 years to individuals in the Bible. Can you produce a single human being that has lived to be 180 years old? Is it your assertion that medicine in biblical ages uh, allowed people to have lifespans like that, and yet in the 21st century with our antibiotics and our surgery and everything else, we can only manage what? 117 years, I think, is the record. You can't support any of your own evidence. By definition, that means that you must uh, accept it on faith. The difference between faith and data and science is that faith cannot be proven nor disproven and doesn't require evidence. Science is the exact opposite. Genesis says the earth is 6,000 years old. Genesis says that the Big Bang never occurred. Science disagrees with you. Who has the preponderance of evidence? Let's go ahead and continue this. Next episode is going to be on the firmament, which is something that I'm particularly interested in, especially with all of the uh, second law of thermodynamic argument. Please go ahead and hit that little like and subscribe button down there in the corner. Hit the bell icon so you know when the next video comes out. And next week we'll continue with the firmament. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Take care and thank you very much for stopping.